My daughter is embarking on the journey of beginning puberty. And one of the things we've been talking about lately is her having crushes. And as it turns out, my daughter happens to be a little bit boy crazy, as was I, and probably as are most young girls when they're young. And, you know, this is common. This is kind of like what society teaches us. Um, but I've been giving a lot of thought to attraction because it's something that through the years I feel like I've come to understand a little bit better than when I was younger, you know? When I was younger and, you know, probably about her age, just starting to figure it out, our bodies wake up, we start to feel feelings, we don't know what the feelings are, so we assume that that feeling is, oh, it's a crush. I have a crush on this person, that means I want, you know, them to be my boyfriend and I want to be their, their girlfriend and, you know, or partner, you know, whatever, whatever your orientation happens to be. And, um, you know, and that's that. That's what that means. So you have a crush on someone and then you have to just sort of pursue it as a romantic interest. And then, you know, what does that turn into when we get older? Well, when we get older, that turns into, um, you know, sex and then connection through sex and romance. And then I was raised in the Christian tradition, so even more so, it was um, not just sex, but then it was marriage. And so this belief, this idea that we, you know, get a crush on someone, or we feel this connection or this feeling with somebody and that that automatically means that, you know, by the time I was a full-blown young adult, my first automatic response was, oh, I'm supposed to marry this person. I have this really extreme attraction to them, and this is, this is the person that I'm supposed to marry. And I jumped into marriage confident, fully, fully believing that that's what that feeling of attraction meant when I was senior in college. and. You know, I got married when I was uh, 21, and I got divorced when I was 22 and a half. <laughs> I call it the marriage of my youth, actually. Um, but, you know, I've been thinking about the idea of attraction, and like, it's like, well, what does that idea mean? You know, in the Eastern traditions, it means something more along the lines of when you have this kind of irresistible draw to somebody, some people believe that it means more that you have karma with them. If you believe in past lives, it could be that you have a past life connection with them. If you believe in, um, you know, uh, there, there's, there's a lot of different things, but as I've gotten older and as I've gotten into monogamous relationships, right, then you know, when you're in a monogamous relationship and then you meet another person that you have kind of this irresistible draw towards, well, does it mean that you're with the wrong person? Does that mean you were supposed to have an affair? Does that mean you're supposed to sleep with this person that you feel this irresistible draw towards? Um, you know, I actually did break up a relationship, a long-term relationship that I was in because I thought that that's what that meant. And I actually did cheat on a partner when I was younger. Um, and, and, you know, I had a long-term relationship that ended because I, I cheated because I felt that feeling. I felt the feeling and I thought that that feeling meant that I was supposed to be with this person and I thought that I was obeying the will of God or the will of the divine or whatever it is that I was supposed to be doing. And, um, you know, that particular person that I cheated with turned out not to be my ideal partner. It turned out to be a very, well, what I would call a karmically laden connection. There was a lot of, 
there was just a lot to unpack and there were some really intense lessons and you know they were lessons that I could have learned without having sucked with the person and without um, you know even if it was time for me to get out of the relationship that I was in I certainly could have handled that in a much different way and you know I look at the person that I was and I I mean I really I really did believe that I was following the synchronicities, that I was following what the universe told me was the path that I was supposed to follow. And, you know, I thought I was being faithful to, to what God had for me. And finally, after sort of like messing it up a few times, and when you talk about messing it up a few times, I mean, that's like, you know, that's like an intense number of years that you're going through this process of figuring this out that's relationships that's heartbreaks it's years of your life and now um you know when i got into my current relationship i remember saying to to my person when i first met him like hey like i cheated on my partner my long-term partner like maybe i'm polyamorous like maybe i just need to like have the option to if I meet somebody that I have this connection, this connection that I just can't deny. Maybe I really need to have the opportunity to pursue that. I mean, if that's like why I'm here on this planet, if I'm here to have these connections, I don't want to have to come back in another life just to resolve my karma with this person. And so it's really important to me. Like, and, um, you know, my partner is... My husband is, is, um, was really understanding actually. And he was very much just like, yeah, whatever you need, which was kind of a surprise. Um, and then, you know, I've been in this current relationship for about five years. And, um, you know, the thing is that, uh, I have since met other people that I felt that connection with so strongly that I had this thought like, oh no, is this one of those situations that I'm gonna like connect with this other person? And as I've gotten older, I've started to realize that like, oh, I can notice that I have a draw towards a person. I can notice that I, you know, I have, I have a, a reason to move towards this person in connection but that doesn't have to equal sex it's not about sex and it's not even about romance it's about something else and you know again i personally do believe in reincarnation i personally do believe in past lives and so for me um you know the couple times that i have felt this and you know i'm like in my early 40s now so i value honesty I value integrity, I value direct communication, um, and you know, you can say like, well, you cheated on your partner, how on earth can you call that integrity? Well, at the time, I really did think I was doing what I was supposed to do, so I was operating in what I what I believed to be my integrity. I, looking back now, I call it um, like an order of operations error, like I knew, like, um, I also felt really trapped. It's a long story and I don't need to like defend or justify myself. I'm not. I'm just trying to explain that like I, I really was doing the best I can with the resources I had at the time within myself. And I look back now and I'm like, okay, I could have done better. And I know I could have done better. And um, I know that I will do better next time. Okay, hold on. I need to look at the plants and I'm doing to make sure I'm doing them in the right order. Should we just... Um, yes, yeah, so, so there were, there have been uh, a couple people, but one in particular, uh, was a friend of mine from my hometown, and you know, he and I talked about it, we talked about it because I was just like, you know, look, I feel this really strong connection, um, I felt it to this person even before I ever get with my previous, or with my current partner, um, but I felt it so strongly, like we had something to, to accomplish for each other. And I thought like, am I supposed to be with this person? I went back and forth about this um, because I did have periods of 
being um, single and, you know, kind of wondered, like, am I supposed to, like, pursue connection with this individual or not? And it never really was harmonious. It never really flowed properly. Um, it just wasn't, like, in... It wasn't in flow. It, it just wasn't, you know, I was moving back and forth between different places. And, um, and we never did have a romantic connection, which now I look back on and go, thank God. We actually wouldn't have been a compatible romantic uh, fit at all. Um, but, um, you know, then this person ended up moving out and staying with my husband and I for um, a few weeks and living in our community for, um, you know, a, a little over a year. He ended up marrying us. Um, he uh, is a, still to this day a very close friend of mine and you know we learned so much from each other and that really is the thing and we helped each other and so now I'm starting to understand that when I have this connection when I meet somebody and I have this instantaneous just sort of like pull and draw and connection it doesn't necessarily need to be about sex or romance but it's really just about like there's something here there's something to learn from this person pay attention another example is um, you know I remember oh gosh I don't even think my daughter was born yet um, I was uh, I was um, I remember I was at the temple, my spiritual community, uh, years and years ago, and this is a place where people have come and go, volunteers, say, people have come and do seva service and um, pray and work out their, and you know, it was a community. And um, I remember walking into the kitchen where this, this new person was there, chopping vegetables, and I walked into the kitchen and I looked. And I just looked him straight in the eyes and was like, I was just like hit. It was like I was hit over the head. Like, oh my God, this person. And his eyes just spoke to me so deeply. And again, I was young. And I thought like, oh my God, I'm supposed to be with this person. And here I was. I did the kind of thing I would have done when I was in high school. Like I wrote him like a letter. It's just like, I feel such a deep connection. This is like, you know, a beautiful thing. Like, do, are we supposed to be romantic together? And you know, as it turns out, this person actually was one of the first person where I started to get the clue that that feeling is not, does not equal romance. Um, and, you know, we pursued sort of the idea of like what that looked like and we decided not to be lovers. We were not romantic, but we were friends um, and we spent time together um, on and off through the years as our you know, um, as we came into contact with each other and, um, at different points of time, he came to stay with me, uh, my family, uh, my household and, you know, um, and then we kind of moved on with our lives. He went his way, I went my way. Well, <laughs> here we are fast forward about 12 years and, um, this person is now my roommate <laughs> and we actually ended up, um, so my current husband and I, we uh, have been wanting to move out of our apartments. I've had this dream for years of wanting to build, uh, like, probably like most people, but wanting to buy some land, wanting to have kind of like a farm, live sustainable, live in community. Um, and, um, you know, we've been kind of stuck in apartments just like everybody we're all stuck in the rent game because during covid the the cost of things just went up so so high that what we had saved what would have been enough to get a house you know what i've what i've got saved now is enough that we we would have been able to afford a house five or at their prices five or six years ago but everything just sort of jumped up in this crazy way and 
uh, this friend and I were talking about it. We've talked through the years because we've always talked about wanting to get land. And finally, I had this idea like, oh my God, I've been limiting myself this whole time to this idea that we need to purchase something. But we could start by just renting a house that has enough land for us to have a garden. That would give us a chance to see if we even want to go in um, on a project together, if we could even like, live together. Um, but it also would allow us to afford, um, you know, to be in a house. And so he was uh, paying $1,400 for his one bedroom apartment. Our rent was being raised for our three bedroom townhouse. It was gonna go from 28 to 32, I think they wanted, <laughs> it's just like crazy. Um, and so we moved into uh, a house together. We currently all rent a house together. He's got a little basement. And it was interesting because I remember when we were moving in that first day, I remembered. I was like, oh my God, do you remember all those years ago when I thought we were supposed to be romantic? And now here we are and we're just totally platonic friends. And we're helping each other. We're a part of each other's lives. Like you're an important part of my life and I'm an important part of your life and like he was a key towards a stepping stone that was moving me closer towards the goal that I have of you know being able to be a little bit more independent and sustainable in my lifestyle and him you know also as a single person you can't we just can't do it alone I mean certainly we can do it alone but it's not sustainable to do it alone myself for just a minute because I want to make sure that I'm doing this properly because I'm doing a little pattern I'm working right now so what's the point the point is that that feeling of attraction doesn't necessarily equal romance and even if we think that it does and so these are lessons that I'm learning as an adult and they've taken me 25 30 years to learn and now here's my daughter and she's entering puberty you know and she is special needs and she's just turned 10 and she's a little bit ahead of her other peers and so she's kind of boy crazy and the boys her age just aren't even there yet and so I'm trying to like explain to her and she's like but I have a crush I have a crush isn't that what that means and it's like she's like well what does that mean then when you have a crush and it's like well, a crush is a feeling a crush is a feeling and we interpret that feeling as oh this is my crush this is the person I'm supposed to be with I'm supposed to have a relationship with them but where do we get that idea from because I think it came from society, movies, I don't know, I don't know. So what do you guys think? What do you guys think it is when we're kids and we have crushes? And you know, is it, am I making it too complicated? Or you know, is it right to teach my daughter that like, hey, you can have a feeling and you can also still not um, act on it. Like, it doesn't mean you need to try to be boyfriends with all these people. And what has it looked like in your life when you've pursued that feeling that felt like it was just absolute attraction and were those your most successful relationships? Because I will say that my husband now, it wasn't that feeling of undeniable connection and attraction. It was something different. It's something more sustainable. It's something more slow growing and um, substantive that we have. So...